I'm Peter Pelster. Uh, we uh, live on a ranch here in Anselmo, west of Anselmo, Nebraska. Uh, it's a family operation. Uh, we started using flail type processors in the mid 90s. Uh, we used, all, used them all the way up to uh, 2015 when we switched to a, a chainless Hustler processor and uh, have used the Hustler ever since. The biggest difference we noticed um, when we first started was uh, your fuel consumption, you'll notice first day, as well as there's not near as much dust. Quiet, there's less wear and tear on your tractors from not using a PTO all the time. You can feed in circles or around corners or write your name backwards if you want. Whereas a, a flail type processor with a PTO, you're, you're destined to feed in, in very, very straight lines. The uh, other things that we noticed was the integrity of your hay is left intact. Your leaf material is, is visible in the windrow and there's, you're not adding wind to a situation. As well as the, the machine, the overall weight of the machines are dramatically less. They're easier to pull around. We found that they're just as strong. Um, we haven't had any trouble breaking machines. They're just overall more user friendly. And so today we're going to uh, do us a test a side-by-side -side comparison of a flail type versus a chainless TH-205. We're gonna test the entire process all the way through, starting with the bales. We baled the hay off the exact same field. Um, we baled baleage and dry hay for a comparison. And so we're gonna test each individual bale before we feed it, each individual bale sitting in a windrow. And we're also going to measure and weigh the fuel into the tractor before we start and after feeding with each processor. And we're also going to be timing hooking and unhooking the processors as well as feeding each individual bale. Um, so we have a head-to-head -head time comparison, fuel comparison, feed value comparison. We've got a Hustler TH-205 sitting on this side a flail type processor sitting on this side, both two bale capacity. We've got one more little bit of housekeeping before we start. When we were feeding with a flail type processor, the, the one thing that just bothered me all the time was the amount of dust that was all over our tractors. And, and I really feel that that dust is feed that we're losing. And so um, when we start here, we're going to try to capture some of that dust uh, with the mineral tub and see if if we can get enough for a feed test. And um, because we're gonna try to do as much comparison here as possible. We're gonna sample each individual bale prior to feeding and after feeding in the windrow and, and just to see if there is a difference between in the bale, if there's, if there's a loss during the feeding process. And so we've got bags <clears throat> that we'll be sending to a laboratory and we're going to write which machine they're going to be fed through prior to feeding, which machine they're fed through after feeding. And so we have a comparison apples to apples from each individual bale. So we're writing on here exactly um, what, what we're testing, um, whether we're testing the dry alfalfa, the baleage alfalfa, or the dry grass hay. Um, we've got our first uh, tests done prior to feeding and so we're testing each individual bale prior to feeding and then after feeding in the windrow to s see if there's a difference. So now part of our test is we're actually going to see what the fuel consumption difference is on feeding three bales between a hustler and three bales between a flail type processor. And so we're going to start by actually topping the tank of the tractor off with a pitcher so we know that it's full and then after each processor we're gonna we're going to measure it and weigh it so we can get as accurate as possible you want to look in there we're going to time the entire process for how long it takes to hook and unhook each machine and then we will start by feeding a bale of dry third cutting alfalfa, and then we'll feed a bale of dry prairie hay, and then we'll come back around and we'll feed one bale of alfalfa baleage, uh, also third cutting, baled off the same field that the dry alfalfa was 
just two days prior to, to bailing it dry. Set, go. We've got the flail type processor hooked up. Uh, we're ready to go. We're gonna feed three bales in a row. We'll feed down the alfalfa going down, the prairie hay coming back, and we'll pick up the bale of third cutting baleage and we'll feed it going down and then we'll be done with the flail type and we'll move on to the hustler processor. Um, just to make sure we're doing everything really accurate, we're actually gonna weigh the fuel going in there. Even though we've got graduated markers and a little wind, we can weigh the difference to be as precise as possible. And we're back to full. Part of the reason that we're doing this is, is, um, everybody is everybody's ranch is a little different. You know, some people are, are feeding right outside their stack yard. Some people are um, picking up bales, going five or six miles to feed their cows. And so we're doing this as, as close to similar as possible with just, and we're just feeding. That's why we, we carried the bales out here so we didn't have to carry them anywhere. Um, and so we're just picking the bales up and feeding them and, and measuring the fuel consumption. We've now, uh, we've refilled the tractor with fuel after using the flail type processor. Uh, we fed three bales, one dry alfalfa, one prairie hay, and one baleage alfalfa. And after refilling with fuel, uh, we, we used 1.17 gallons. And so now we're going to move on to the Hustler processor. And so now to recap of the flail type processor, uh, to hook the machine to the tractor took one minute and six seconds, and to feed all three bales, it took 19 minutes and 52 seconds. So uh, now that we're done with the flail type machine and we're hooked up and, and ready to go with the Hustler, uh, we're gonna start just the same way we did with the flail type machine. Uh, we're gonna feed the dry third cutting alfalfa and we're going to feed the prairie hay and then we're going to feed one baleage of third cutting baleage.
getting the first bale loaded and um, first and foremost you don't have to get in and out twice to cut the net wrap off one in one out done feeding with both machines we're gonna fill it up with fuel one more time measure it um, for the fuel consumption used through the hustler machine so uh, we finished filling the tractor back up with fuel again for the third time uh, after feeding with the hustler processor it took 0.54 gallons to feed three bales and to feed the exact same three bales so following up after feeding with the hustler machine uh, it took 57 seconds to hook the machine up and then to feed the three bales took 14 minutes and 48 seconds. So now we're going to walk across each windrow in the order that we fed each bale. We'll just talk about the differences that we see. And for starters, walking down this row, there was a lot of slobber coming out when we first started that bale. We were driving approximately one and a half miles an hour to feed this windrow and the windrow is actually there is dust clear to here and then on the inside there's hay to here at least four feet on each side and examining the windrow it is ground and the prairie hay windrow is the same there's dust blown four to eight feet on the downwind side and at least four feet on underneath the machine side and the same thing here the product is ground and walking across the baleage and there's leaves on the baleage farther out here than anything underneath the machine side there's leaves for eight feet walking across to the hustler wind rows on the opposite side there's no dust on the machine side which would be the downwind side there is some light dust two and a half feet from the wind row this is on the this is the dry third cutting alfalfa all the leaves are still in a mat in the windrow and the product is very long stem it's a very fluffy windrow the leaves are actually still on the plants the prairie hay the leaves are still intact looks just like the day we baled it and as far as dust on the downwind side there is none it all ended up in the windrow and the baleage all the leaves are still completely intact they'll like that and on the downwind side of the baleage there's no leaves and so now we're going to take our feed samples out of each windrow to compare before feeding and after feeding so we're going to start with the dry alfalfa dry third cutting alfalfa fed through the hustler machine and we're just going to walk down and pick a couple handfuls here and there uh, just like a cow would be grazing that one off to you and next we're going to do the dry prairie hay fed through the hustler processor and last but not least the baleage through the hustler processor and now moving on to the flail machine bales starting on the dry third cutting alfalfa
the uh, prairie hay fed through the flail type processor. And then last but not least, the baleage fed through the flail type processor. And so we've pulled all the samples out of the individual windrows after feeding. And so if uh, you can come around here where you can see, uh, we'll go over each comparison of each at the same time. And so let's start with the dry alfalfa. That's what we fed first. Dry alfalfa fed through the flail is on the left. Dry alfalfa fed through the hustler is on the right. This is the dust captured off of a flail type processor. And then these two are the, the grass samples, prairie hay samples. Um, left again is fed through the flail type, right fed through the hustler. And then the third sample is the baleage fed through, again, the flail on the left, hustler on the right. 